You know, now that we've made it to the season of spring this year, this is around the time when we're going to finally start seeing all of these movie trailers becoming actual final products. So at this point forwards, I'd kind of like to steer my YouTube channel slightly to the side and lean more into movie reviews once these movies actually come out. There's all sorts of releases for this month of April, and the very first one to roll up is this. This is Britain, attempting to do their own animated movie, and it was released via Sky, or Now TV. Which, if you're not aware of, is essentially, I would assume, the peacock of the UK world. No one my age or younger who enjoys animated movies is really watching this. The only people that will see it are the people that have it randomly appear in front of them on the TV. It's very much the middle-aged, middle-class demographic. Considering I already pay £10 a month for Now TV and had to pay another £10 per month for a different side of Now TV films, kind of shows the kind of demographic of who's going to be able to watch this. The kind who's willing to spend way too much money for a streaming service. So Ten Lies, with its already awful titling system, is essentially Garfield, but the British rip-off version. As you can see with the visuals in front of you, it's about a fat cat doing things. The visuals of this entire movie somehow look like a kind of mobile ad the entire time. This clearly isn't being done by like a Puss in Boots DreamWorks studio. It's a side studio, you know, very much enveloping into its own British cornery world. And this very much feels like a movie that was an animated movie made from the perspective of someone British who assumes what an animated movie is, you know? To them, animation is just super baby kids movie. Generic, sloppy, doesn't matter. It'll entertain the babies for 80 minutes. And that's exactly what this movie is. This movie, I want to say, is terrible. Chances are, later down in the year, I will make a full terrible out of this movie, because to me, this is just schmuck. It's no different to all the other overly liquidized porridge movies I've watched in the past. But what I found especially baffling when I went to look up the general other reviews from more established professionals in the field, everyone surprisingly has a lot of praises for this movie. It stands at a solid 80% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I cannot for the life of me find out how. I assume it is literally just because everyone who has a super positive opinion of this movie doesn't really understand or respect the genre. This is a movie built for toddlers, and sometimes that's okay. Everyone's gotta learn their first cliche at some point. So the fact that this is a movie about Save the Bees, where the villain ends up having robot bees, is maybe possible, because it's meant to be someone's first time experiencing that incredibly boring, overly done, nature conservative storyline. But at the same time, everything about this movie is completely methodical and already treaded. Anything vaguely new coming from this movie is the opportunity to give some cast members a new shot in the movie limelight. Up front and centre we have Mo Gilligan, who is a triple BAFTA award winning British stand-up comedian and television presenter. Big British name, finally going to the cinema screen. And you know, there's an appeal to his voice. But also, it's very clear that the director is just asking him, really, to do a James Corden impression. He's just Garfield if James Corden possessed his body instead of Chris Pratt. And maybe he does the job well, but I just don't like the directing style for his character or most of the voices in this movie. The villain of the story is Bill Nye, and he kind of has a little bit of Jeff Goldblum syndrome where he just doesn't enunciate well for a villain. Very clearly just phoning it in, calling it a day. But considering his villain is also phoning it in and calling it a day, maybe that's more fitting than it means to be. But really, with this British studio swinging in, contributing something to the animation sphere and hoping for a success without understanding it, the thing that they're really swinging with is the existence of Zayn Malik in their story. Wah! They went out of their way to cast him as two separate characters. Twins. Minions. They also have about half a personality combined and everything he says is so poorly done. I also just found it strange that when I was reading the research for this movie, when I was doing a video about the trailer of it, all these interviews were basically just spoilers of the entire thing. Like Zayn Malik was like, I'm playing the minions, but they're not really bad guys. And then the twist at the end of this movie is, oh, they're not really bad guys. And you know this because they keep saying, oh, we're not really bad guys, three times in the final fight sequence. They're covered in a curtain and everyone's insulting them. They're like, oh, we're not really bad guys. And it's like, oh, Jesus Christ. 
This movie is an insult to animation. Not in that it's incredibly awful. There's nothing really clip-wise I can show you too much that'll make you laugh at, oh god, this is terrible. Unless you're really passionate about pepperoni pieces on an anus. But it is so shockingly dull. I realize that I'm a sentient, fully grown adult with the ability to have object permanence, so I'm not exactly the demographic, but this movie was so boring, man. When you compare it to its animation rivals, we've got an actual Garfield movie, which will be hopefully slightly better than Schmuck. And then at the same time, another cat movie in the form of Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. This is just horrendous. Welcome to the halfway mark. Thank you for making it halfway through to this video. As per usual, do check below to see if you are subscribed. And come join along as we're going to hopefully review every animated movie that comes out in 2024. It's a little bit harder to follow foreign movies if the trailers and news just doesn't get circulated to me. Or I don't have a way to watch them. But I can certainly cover the American and British front. And give me a couple more months and maybe this will pop up in our terrible review series. As we're bringing that back for every weekend as well. Anyway, thanks for listening to this little break. And let's get back to the awfully titled, awfully visualed, awfully directed, and awfully realized 10 lives. Zayn Malik, as well as taking on those two minion roles, is also just cluttering all of the soundtrack. There's all sorts of opportunities for just new pop culture montage music shoved in there for places. There's all sorts of data jokes, because, I mean, anyone in their 20s is not really meant to perceive this movie, so they, they have a bit about calling out hipsters, because that wasn't a thing 12 years ago. And also, the main premise of this story is this cat here dies, and it has nine other lives, or ten lives. I think they say he gets a full reset of nine, so fair enough. He ends up as a different animal. It teleports him somewhere vaguely around his owner, and in that they somewhat open the mystery that their boss professor is actually going to try and betray their science experiment to save the bees. But also, it could have been interesting that the reveal is shown slowly with this mystery, as we see different perspectives from different animals in different places, all through this one spirit going through it. But no! The opening scene is essentially a, I oh, bet you're wondering how I got here, as he's a horse attacking the final boss. And then also, there are just shots of the villain being like, I'm evil now, and then we cut to an animal somewhere else. Clearly, this is Baby's first film, so there is going to be no nuance of that, no real mystery, but it's still incredibly boring as a story nonetheless. As our knockoff James Corden cat goes on to go through the other animals, he slowly starts to envelop understanding. He learns of the betrayal, he gets closer to his owner, I guess. Accepts the ex-boyfriend that disappeared randomly for nine weeks, and we're kind of just going to overlook, sure, whatever. There is a lot of silly pain humor that I just don't enjoy, and there is such an awful obsession with, like, potty humor in this movie. So much of this movie is themed around butts, and it's just all cringe. Oh, breath of fresh air. Fate made my buttocks the target. A bare-bottomed bullseye. My pink posterior. Plump round cheeks. I will be nobody's number two. Ron was always the butt of the joke. Dicky num bum. <laughs> ooh, ooh, is that smell? My butt. Please. <laughs> Now, by the end of the movie, the professor has gone full-on traitor mode. Oh my god, he's managed to poison the bees rather than save the bees. The bees have allergies. That's the story. And instead, he comes in with his power glove to show off his all-new powerful robo-bees. Oh, sorry, they're not called robo-bees. They're called... I call them... Robo-drones. Is a drone not already a robo? Anyway, he gets foiled, stung in the butt by bees because that was his tragic backstory. And then actually what I liked is that they actually had a genuine dark ending because this is a British movie. The cat then comes back as a cat and then dies in the water. There you go. Blub, blub, blub. It gone now. Except it's not because then it's back again for some random reason. After specifically establishing, here, you used up your nine lives and now here's another nine lives. They're all gone. For the sake of an epilogue, it is one more. Screw you. It's like three, five years later. Pop along. Have a good time. Reincarnation is real, I guess. But the other cat went to hell, so I don't know. W was that the, the title? Was the title a spoiler? He didn't get nine extra lives. He got ten for no real reason other than happy ending. I don't know, man. This movie, when you look at it, is just so clearly generic. It is a mobile ad with a movie's budget. 
as you look closer, you come to see he's basically just Garfield. He's basically just James Corden. Clearly, Britain worked out that those two things are successful and made their own ripoff. They then took on the plot lines of what if we were conserving the bees? What if you played with the cat's ten lives? Which is almost an interesting idea, but with this director and with this writing and with this phoning it in cast trying to be somebody else, none of it is endearing, impactful, or good. And we kind of just hop over the fact that the main character dies like ten times, and in some ways, pretty tragically, he gets depressed as a parrot because he sees that his owner's moved on and then gets crushed by his own cat jungle tower. A lot of the lives are also just immediately wasted, but it is meant to be 80 minutes, so we're kind of cutting through it pretty quickly. But you can predict this movie a mile away, and I wouldn't put my child in front of this movie because it's so clearly bland. It's uninterested in doing anything new. It is trying to be exactly what it thinks an animated movie should be. It is schlop to put in front of children to entertain them for an hour with nothing else worthy of interest put onto it. If I had a child to choose what to watch, I would put them a mile away from this movie and put it in some genuine good child's animation because we've literally been fed that for 30 years now and there's still corners of the industry that have never acknowledged it. And getting an 80% via critics just tells me that these critics as well don't really appreciate animation. Definitively, this is a movie made by middle-aged people to chuck in front of their kids like the iPad babies they're being parented to become. But hey, at least the flying glasses were cool. I literally can't find any other thing positive that this movie did well. On that note, I'm going to end it off there. My name's been Daz. Thank you for making it to the very end. Be very glad you didn't watch this movie. You haven't seen it, have you? Unless your parents literally stuck it in front of you because it was playing today at 8pm or something. It's not going to cross your mind. So let's just leave it be. And on that note, I shall see you in a little bit. Ah, I love reviewing movies. Why are so many of them just junkyard movies? <laughs>